Hi, I'm Jay Richards. We're at the COSM 2021 conference here in Bellevue, Washington. We're at the last day, and I'm joined by Walter Meyer. And Walter actually is at Microsoft. He's also a member of the Board of Discovery Institute. Well, good to see you. Thanks for having me, Jay. Yeah, so you were on this panel yesterday. It was fascinating. It's one of my, kind of the more controversial and energetic panels called, Is It the End for Silicon Valley? So what was, what was the point of this panel? I thought that was a little bit provocative. Yeah, all right. <laughs> But I think we all know it's not the end of Silicon Valley. But I think if you look at if you look at where where things are going with respect to um, to technology and innovation, Silicon Valley is not going to be the only place for technology and innovation, mm -hmm. um, particularly because of California policies or regulations, right. environmental things going on in California. They're truly hurting the state. I mean, the state used to be a bastion of manufacturing. So you had right. house, you had construction for housing, <laughs> energy, manufacturing. You had all these great things that provided great middle class jobs. Mm -hmm. But what's happened is it's become more of a more of a a, a state where you have the very wealthy, yep. and then you have the or sort of a feudalist system, if you will, as Joe right. Kotkin, the um, demographer at Chapman yes. University, describes it where you have the very wealthy and then you have the very poor that are serving them. And then you're sort of seeing this, the middle the middle, um, middle class people are sort of right. being hollowed out over time. Well, and so there's this weird dynamic because of course there are these, uh, there's certain ne the network effects of locations. There's a reason mm -hmm. that Silicon Valley is what it is, but then there's also the, the technology that ena enables people to be remote simultaneously. Exactly. The two different types of networks. I mean, do you think that's going to play a role at least in, in dissipating the importance of some central locations or will it not do that? What do you think? Oh, absolutely. And I think the pandemic has, has yeah. hastened that because you've seen these technologies such as Zoom, Microsoft mm -hmm. Teams, Amazon Chime to some degree, and Google has a, their, their stuff. And so you're seeing sort of this democratizing effect where yeah. Cities around the country, for example, uh, cities where you're at, and I think it's really driven by the millennials because mm. they are the largest, the largest working group now right. um, since 2016. And um, the baby boomers have most of the money, yep. but the millennials are the future. They're the mm -hmm. ones who will be governing, who will be running corporations, you know, 10, 10, 15 years from now and beyond. Yeah. And so we're seeing these trends, uh, trends moving, to, moving, these trends moving over the course of the next 10 years. Okay. So you're seeing that the millennials are saying, hey, it's just too expensive to live in California. Right. So they may grow up in California then. And as when they're younger, they tend to gravitate toward, towards the larger cities. Mm -hmm. But as they get older into their, thir into their late 20s and early 30s and they want to start families, they're starting to think, right. I can't afford an, a $600,000 house in California somewhere in a cracker box somewhere near San, I mean, <laughs> yeah. near San Jose. Right. It's just not going to work for them. <laughs> Yeah, and you're in Irvine, right? And I'm in Irvine. Yeah, exactly. And so, I mean, it's, it, it is your sense that a lot of what's happened, the bad stuff that's happened, is really it's really a policy problem it's a policy at the state problem. level? Yes, at the state level, it's a policy problem. Um, California is not really big on suburbs. They believe mm -hmm. more in the dense urban core. Right. And if you look at pandemics, right, I mean, obviously, the more people you have <laughs> concentrated, the more chance you have yeah. for people for transmission. And so with a pandemic, with technology, what we're seeing now is that a lot of the cities um, around the country, um, sort of mid metropolitan, mid metropolitan mm -hmm. cities are building out their broadband frameworks. They're providing very high, high connectivity. So you're seeing people move to places like, well, of course, Texas, yeah, of course. they're moving to Dallas, they're moving yep. to Austin, Houston, they're moving to Orlando, Florida, mm -hmm. they're moving to Charlotte, North Carolina, yes. they're moving to Atlanta, Nashville, Birmingham, um, great, all great Utah, cities, all great stuff cities. There. Yeah. And there are a lot of smaller cities as well. And mm -hmm. I think also you'll see a revitalization of more rural areas as mm -hmm. they're bringing in broadband because millennials really love to be a part of a community. Yeah, it makes so, sense. So I think this whole democratizing effect actually is a great thing that we don't see Silicon Valley will be dominating, but there will be multiple technolo technology and innovation centers around the, around the world. And I think that, I mean, around the country. And I think that will really revitalize revitalize the country as a whole. Now you said something about school choice and you know people talk a lot about social justice and equality and yet the, often the very people talking about that don't seem to, to mind that well you know it's, I'm well off I can send my kids where I want but of lower middle class people that this isn't true. I mean I'm wondering if that's a way states could differentiate themselves. Um, I, 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 do, I do believe so and, and the thing is I, I think what's imperative is that if you look at California in terms of it saying how diverse it is and how well it's taking care of its, of, of its minorities, you know, blacks and yeah. people of color, actually those are the people who are not being served mm. because the, the education system is not serving them and of course mm -hmm. you have the whole CRT thing now yeah. which is not teaching reading, no. writing and arithmetic 
it's basically in my in my in my view it's just basically teaching people that that certain groups of people are bad certain groups mm-hmm. of people are good there's a pre- i mean it's basically marxist yeah. ideology yeah. and i just don't see how does that actually help a student Honestly. who who's a poor student who wants to succeed, you're not telling that person that you can succeed, you're telling that person that they're being oppressed. Mm-hmm. And so, and, and if you're not educating them, it will be a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah. So if you look at California, roughly one quarter of black students in California are prepared to go on to college mm. or to any uh, or other types of post-secondary education. Yeah. 20, that means there's 75% right. that are not prepared to, inter- particularly work for a tech company, yeah. well, work for right. a tech company. Yeah. So not prepared to have to, to have economic success and move up the economic ladder. So it just seems like all the things California is doing are backwards. And so this gives an opportunity to a lot of these other areas, uh, a lot of other technological areas as they're coming up mm-hmm. to provide those opportunities and also to focus on making sure that everyone gets a quality education, no matter mm-hmm. what their what their background. Well, and so, of course, we tend to think if you're not in California, you just tend to think California is a state. But of course, there's local variation, too. Right. I mean, you're in Irvine. So is that Orange County? Yes, that's Orange yeah. County. And uh, Irvine, well, Irvine is a master plan community. OK. It is. And it's basically it was, I mean, well, 40, 50 years ago, it was just <laughs> grapefruit farms, and, and yeah. farms orange, right. you know, orange groves. Yeah. But um, through that master plan, the idea was to build out a core city, not a very dense core city, but mm. to have a mix of technology and, and manufacturing a number of different things um, in, in that to have a diverse type of type of economy yeah. and then have those suburbs around it. So what you're seeing is this growth around Irvine. Irvine is really booming, hmm. They're building lots of homes. And there are lots of other suburbs around, such as Tustin, where I live. Yep. And so it's a, it's a great economy. So I think Irvine and that area or in Orange County is a microcosm of what I think California could be mm-hmm. if the people in Sacramento were really thinking about what they're doing. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, I mean, and that is important. And it's nice that at least at the moment, Americans are still free to move from city to city absolutely. and from state to state. And I think that so we'll, we'll have this kind of internal uh, competition, as Louis Brandeis said, the sort of laboratories of democracy. Exactly, and I, and I think as we, uh, the millennials are going, will demand. Yeah. Our, the min- millennials are very demanding. Yes. And I think they are going to move to these other cities, and we're going to see a lot of great things come out of what the millennials are doing in terms of where they're driving the economy, where they're driving, where they're driving technology. And um, so, so California, California stands to yeah. lose if it doesn't, if it doesn't um, change its ways. Good stuff. Good to talk to you. Thank you so much. Right, well. Appreciate it. I'm Jay Richards. We're at COSM 2021. Thanks for joining us.